It is 2.45 a.m. in the clear morning of August 6, 1945. The crew of the Enola Gay, a specially modified B-29 bomber, take off from their base in the Pacific. They are silently approaching the Japanese mainland, carrying a lone four and a half ton bomb named Little Boy. Reaching their target, the city of Hiroshima, the crew checks the bomb bay for one last time, and at 8.15 a.m. the bomb bay doors open. Little Boy is dropped. In mere seconds, 140,000 lives vanished at the blink of an eye. The bomber is rocked by the blast, to the astonishment of the crew. However, this atomic blast would not have been possible without the painstaking revolutionary research done behind the bomb, research that involved top-of-the-line scientists from the US, Britain and Canada in a project collectively known as the Manhattan Project. The idea of splitting atoms to release their power in warfare appears as early as 1914, such as in the fiction of the famed English writer H.G. Wells, nearly 20 years later. This theory became reality in 1938 after Otto Hahn, a German scientist, discovered nuclear fission, which is the reaction in which the nucleus of an atom successfully splits into two or more smaller nuclei, hence creating a devastating chain of reactions and releasing massive amounts of energy. Recognizing the tremendous power of nuclear warfare and suspecting Nazi development of Germany's own nuclear weapons program, in August of 1939, Hungarian-born physicists Lizard and Wigner wrote a letter to the US government signed by Albert Einstein himself, warning the US about the potential power of nuclear weapons and urging the Roosevelt administration to speed up the existing atomic research of J. Robert Oppenheimer, Enrico Fermi, and others. After US intelligence operatives confirmed the existence of a German nuclear weapons program, Roosevelt set up the Advisory Committee on Uranium to research the possibilities of weaponizing uranium. Receiving positive replies, the US government started funding research by Enrico Fermi and Leo Slezard at Columbia University. What was an initial grant of $6,000 ballooned into a staggering $1.9 billion near the war's end, allocated to research and development. In any case, the ever-expanding project was renamed in 1940 to the National Defense Research Committee and then finally to the Office of Scientific Research and Development in 1941. After Japan's Pearl Harbor attack in 1941, the Army Corps of Engineers joined the OSRD, forming the Manhattan Engineer District. Led by Brigadier General Leslie Groves, the Manhattan Project took on a new militaristic phase with scientists serving in a supporting role. Finally, on December 28, 1942, President Roosevelt authorized the formation of the Manhattan Project. This project aimed to combine the different research efforts into one single national effort to weaponize nuclear energy. Uranium and plutonium production facilities and testing sites were set up in remote locations in New Mexico, Tennessee, and Washington state. Theoretical physicist Julius Robert Oppenheimer was already working on the concept of nuclear fission. He was named director of the Los Alamos Laboratory in northern New Mexico in 1943. It was around this time that the USA, Great Britain and Canada joined forces, hence massively boosting progress via shared research towards the atomic bomb. Scientists working under Oppenheimer had developed two distinct types of bombs, an uranium-based design called the Little Boy and a plutonium based weapon called the Fat Man. On the fate changing day of July the 16th, 1945, in a remote desert location near Alamo Gordo, New Mexico, the first atomic bomb was successfully detonated, much to the relief of Oppenheimer and all of the scientists of the Manhattan Project. With no surrender agreement by the Japanese Empire in place, on August the 6th, 1945, the Enola Gay bomber plane dropped the as of yet untested little boy bomb some 1,900 feet above Hiroshima, causing unprecedented destruction and death. Three days later, with still no surrender declared, on August 9th, the Fat Man bomb was dropped over Nagasaki. The two bombs combined killed more than 200,000 people and leveled the two cities to the ground. While Oppenheimer did not regret his work on the bomb, justifying it for a sense of duty, he was appalled by the use of the bomb by the USA government in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Indeed, in connection to the graveness of this act, Oppenheimer quoted the Hindu scripture Bhagavad Gita by saying, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. He embarked on a crusade to regulate, if not outright ban, nuclear weapons. 
he wrote to Truman, the USA president at that time, saying that he has blood on his hands. Falling out of favor with the USA government, Oppenheimer was even accused of communism during McCarthy's witch hunts in the 50s. He later died of throat cancer in 1967. In conclusion, the Manhattan Project stands as a remarkable testament to human ingenuity, scientific advancement and the ethical dilemmas that arise when faced with monumental choices. The successful creation of the atomic bomb forever altered the world's geopolitical landscape, ushering in the nuclear age and fundamentally reshaped the dynamics of international relations. If you like this video, consider subscribing to Spread History. This has been the historiographer and the culture genie. And for now, have a good day.